From KGW, this is The Good Stuff. This really is a celebration of what you can do and the fun you can have. And, and being alive, it's a celebration of being alive. And what better way to start the good stuff than with a celebration of being alive. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Brittany Falkers. That celebration comes courtesy of a funky jazz band that returns once a year in Portland. But the musicians are doing more than just jamming. They're raising money for a cause dear to their heart. Ashley Grams shares their story of triumph and faith. That's the best part of the whole thing, is standing up on the stage and watching people smile and laugh and dance and have a good time. Yes, yeah, that's the best part of the whole thing. Is Philip Hodap and his band reunite once a year for a moment of true joy. We wanted the band that we could play the songs we want, and coincidentally, those end up being the songs that people dance to. Hodap and his saxophone join the jazzy melody that can get even the shyest on the dance floor. And their name? Well, don't let your mother hear. The best anybody can come up with is, is this is a bitchin' band. <laughs> their talent isn't overstated. Hodap and his friends were so popular, they had to start selling tickets. And we had to start um, booking venues. Musicians always wanted to benefit a cause bigger than themselves. Uh, they were shocked, most of them. In 2015, they had a chance to support one of their own. They knew something was wrong, but they didn't really know what it was. Um, Hodap told his friends that he had Parkinson's disease. But his story with Parkinson's began long before that day. Hodap was diagnosed in 1997. My neurologist at Kaiser um, sat me down. He said, you have Parkinson's and you have five years till you'll be in a nursing home and 10 years to live. So you should start making your plans. A lifelong musician, husband, and soon to be father, faced with the fact that life as he knew it could be silenced in a few short years. I remember when my son was born, that I held him like this with his little head here because he weighed almost 11 pounds. His head was here. His that moment with his newborn son would prove to be pivotal. And I promised him that I would stay alive long enough to watch him graduate from high school. A commitment he kept, staying active, eating right, his own son a reminder of all the years he wasn't supposed to get, the diagnosis he defied. I have a pretty deep faith, you know, a faith and belief that whatever he endures will be redeemed. Whatever is my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. Whatever the disease takes, it can't take that. Alongside the spiritual, Hodap relies on the sound that's comforted him for over 50 years. You can say a lot with this that you can't say with words. No, I love this horn. His fingers on the keys. It's a great horn. A kind of medicine. The saxophone, an escape from his daily battle. Parkinson's often causes tremors, trouble balancing, and difficulty thinking. The disease is the disease and it will do what it wants to do. It won't, you can't by sheer force of will stop it, but you can stop the progression or slow the progression. Yeah, yeah. On Saturday, Hodap and his band will play a concert, benefiting Parkinson's resources of Oregon. This place fills a very uh, unique and interesting gap in the Parkinson's community. We um, provide services, resources, education to people with Parkinson's, their families, and caregivers. A local nonprofit that supports families in Oregon and Southwest Washington for free because nobody should face this disease alone, regardless of their ability to pay. Hodap wants each person who faces the diagnosis to know they're not alone. That's one of the reasons he still performs. If somebody can look at me on a stage and go, holy crap, he's played that long and he's had it that long and he can still do that, maybe my life isn't over because I have a diagnosis. A fundraiser, but even more so, a song of celebration for each person fighting for one more day. This really is a celebration of what you can do and the fun you can have. And, and being alive, it's a celebration of being alive. 
Ashley Grams, KGW News. Wow, a talented musician and just an inspiring human being. And it's also so cool when you see the community come together to support our community and those going through something that's really difficult. And doing it through music, you know I love that. And hey, tonight a Portland favorite is getting ready for a different kind of celebration. The Lunar New Year is right around the corner. And today we got a preview of how the Lansu Chinese Garden in Old Town is preparing. Several lanterns were brought in ahead of their two week event. Those included a pink lotus, a giant panda, and of course, a massive dragon. Gosh, so beautiful. You can check out the lanterns starting next Tuesday. The garden will also host lion dances, martial art performances, and other cultural events from February 10th through March 2nd. For the schedule and ticket information, just head to lansuchinesegarden.org. Another celebration in Portland starts tomorrow. It's the Winter Light Festival. I love this so much every year. The event features more than 100 displays at sites all around the city. Here's Sydney Dorner with a look at how artists are getting ready. An illuminated bike ride, LED drag show, and secret roller disco are all coming to Portland this weekend. The Winter Light Festival is back in the Rose City for the ninth time. So we're going to have all installations all over town and some active art installations specifically starting this weekend. So we're inviting everybody to come downtown. The three main sites for light displays and events are at Pioneer Courthouse Square, the World Trade Center, and Electric Blocks in Portland Central East Side. The nine-day festival is free and will feature more than one 160 art installations. Three different musical compositions going on that are data derived from local rivers and there is a corresponding light show that's also data derived. The Willamette Light Brigade is a nonprofit that hosts the Portland Winter Light Festival each year. They aim to fuse together technology, art, and community. Artists we spoke to say everyone reacts to the art differently, but it's always a good time. So awesome every time we install it to see people interact with it and have a good time with it. And uh, everyone has their own relationship to the installation. Some people are going to be quiet, some people are going to dance and party or do all kinds of things. 208,000 people attended the event in 2023 with hopes of that number growing this year. The fun will kick off at 6 p.m. Friday with the fire show at Pioneer Courthouse Square. Sydney Dorner, KGW News. Oh, it's so cool. Those artists work so hard to put on these displays. Can't wait. All right, the Pacific Northwest is home to some amazing natural beauty, right? Well, after the break, we're going to meet Kenny, the Portland filmmaker who's made it his goal to encourage BIPOC communities to get out there and explore.
and welcome back. It's time now to get out there and this week we're heading to the Sandy River. A Portland filmmaker is using his love for the outdoors to make space for the BIPOC community. John Goodwin shows us how his two passions have aligned. It's going to be home for a little bit. When I was a kid, I used to dream about doing these things, but I never really thought I'd, I'd do them. We all have our reasons for getting outside. It's going to be better this time, and then we're going to hook one, and it's going to be the best fishing day ever. Or we don't hook one, and it's still going to be a great fishing day. Today, Kenny X Hamlet is answering the call of the Sandy River. The river's freaking high. <laughs> I haven't been here with the river being this high before. But I think that's supposed to be a good thing. I think that means the steelhead are finally here. And I've only been up here about four or five times. Steelhead is what he's after. Whether they'll play ball is the question. Steelhead are known uh, as the fish of a thousand cast. Very hard to come by. Kenny is a Portland filmmaker. In the past, he's documented his own experiences, focusing on mental health and encouraging people of color to enjoy our outdoor spaces. There's just like a different piece that I get from this. It's just being here and like slowing down and shutting out the rest of the world and having a moment to yourself that you can't get when you're living everyday life. You're just like sitting here focused on this little bobber, waiting for it to go under. <laughs> if it ever goes under. Kenny's into everything outdoors. He's just gotten into fishing and went on his first elk hunt last year. His newest series, We the People, features outdoor stories from the BIPOC community. These spaces are for everybody. And then you realize there are just so many similarities between people than we think. But because of the way that people are perceived and we never meet these people, we just have ideas about them. Because I think that, that he's one of us thing should change to where it's not, he's one of us, he's a hunter, but he's one of us, he's a human. The first episode was released last month. You can catch the series on his YouTube page, Better Days West telling stories in an unconventional way, ways that you don't see them being told right now in these spaces, so that everyone feels welcome. They can see themselves. That's really what it is. Now, he didn't catch anything today, either a case of fisherman's luck or camera shy steelhead. But the payoff for Kenny is the time well spent and making space for everyone. Sometimes it doesn't feel like we fit those that mold or what it looks like to be there, but I guarantee you the second you step out here, you'll feel it and it's something that can't really be described. And Troutdale, I'm John Goodwin. Let's get out there. Yeah, and that indescribable feeling of the outdoors, that belongs to everyone. Kenny does some really beautiful work. You can learn more about him and see his projects on YouTube. And if you love the outdoors like I do, give him a follow on Instagram at kenny.x.hamlet. You're going to love to follow him. And you know what? We love to see your photos, too, showing us how you've been getting out there. So let's check out some of them right now. Jennifer starts us off on the Oregon coast. She shared a beautiful shot of a Lincoln City sunset. And you know who else loves the water? The sweet boy. Kayla shared this photo of her pup Clyde enjoying some fun in the water. And this pooch isn't the only alone in his outdoor fun. Oh no, his partner in crime, Bonnie Barker, was soaking up some sunshine today. Yeah, gotta get it in while you can. Oh, they're the perfect doggy duo, Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, I'm sure they get in all sorts of trouble. Well, hey, check out Dave's outdoor adventure buddy. We didn't get a name here on this adorable guy or gal, but I'm gonna go with what feels right, and that name is Precious, because this dog is so precious. Thanks for sharing this photo, Dave. And hey, speaking of pals who make the outdoors fun, here I am with my crew a couple of weeks ago at government camp. We tried to make it up to the mountain, but we're stopped by the ice and snowstorm. Our Airbnb lost power, but luckily, Charlie's has a generator. Joe was just up at Govey too and shared this totally tubular photo. You know, skiing and snowboarding are awesome, but there's just something special about night tubing, isn't there? It looks like so much fun. I hope the kiddos enjoyed it. And finally, let's bring it back to the thrill of reeling in a big catch. Rob shared this photo from a trip where he took veterans out fishing. Some good time on the boat is just some good time for the soul. And hey, you can share your photos and stories of the good stuff happening in our community. Maybe your outdoor adventure photos. Send them on over by texting us right now at 503-226-5088. You can also email me at thegoodstuff at kgw.com.
Today is the first day of Black History Month, and every day this month, we're going to highlight an influential Black Oregonian. Next, we're learning about Ahmad Rashad and his journey from athlete to Emmy Award winner. To celebrate Black History Month, we'll be highlighting an influential Black Oregonian each day in February. You'll likely recognize some of these names, but we also hope that it's a history lesson. We started off with turned Emmy Award winning broadcaster. Ahmad Rashad was born in Portland in 1949. Known back then as Bobby Moore, he became a standout high school athlete in Tacoma, Washington. After graduating, Moore accepted a football scholarship to the University of Oregon. During three record-setting seasons, he rushed for over 2,000 yards, caught 131 passes, and scored 226 points. Records that stood for 18 years. Moore was selected fourth overall in the 1972 NFL Draft. During his senior year in college, he converted to Islam. And during his second season in the NFL, he changed his name to Ahmad Rashad. He faced ridicule and discrimination as one of the only Muslim professional athletes in the U.S. During his 11-year NFL career, he made four Pro Bowls and earned a spot in the Minnesota Vikings Ring of Honor. Rashad didn't slow down after his playing days ended. He worked with NBC Sports for 20 years, covering the NFL, the NBA, and the Olympics. The Emmy Award winner also hosted NBA Inside Stuff for 15 seasons. Ahmad Rashad, a legend on and off the field. Gosh, that's an amazing man. I mean, I grew up in Minnesota, so 
I know all about a moderate shot. Well, hey, here is some more good stuff. People in southwest Portland now have a refreshed and updated library to visit. Check it out. The Capitol Hill Library reopened its doors to the public today. It was closed back in May of last year and is one of the first of 10 county libraries to finish renovations. And it's more than just new paint. There are new children's and teen spaces, an improved reading room, and automated checkout stations. We're still waiting to hear about a reopening date for the Central Library downtown. Straight ahead here on The Good Stuff, a hero dog saves his family from a fire, but it's the details of this story that make it so extraordinary. But first, we've gotten so many really great photos from you all this week of some stunning sunrises. So here's another, wow, look at that. That shot from Juanita shows sunrise from Boring earlier this week. It looks like a painting, it's so gorgeous. Finally tonight, a remarkable story of a dog protecting his family from fire. The dog who happens to be deaf helped them escape and it turns out his family are firefighters themselves. Madison Gaffner has our story. It means a lot. Knowing that he, you know, he loves us that much. And you can see the love as Dakota comforted his mom while she retold us what happened. I remember I was shaking and you know, we were all scared and I uh, didn't quite register what was going on until we had got out. Blankets still on the couch where they fell asleep, but even through it all, they remained thankful. My kids, you know, they were all crying, and we were, we were thankful that it was him that woke us up, that got us out. However, it wasn't just a tough night for the family, but the fire community as well. Well, we were notified, our pagers alerted us about 
12:13 a.m. Monday morning, <laughs> and off. I automatically knew that it was two of our firefighters just home. But when the chief was asked about the true hero, we should have had you a hero badge put around your neck, huh? While Dakota couldn't hear it, he could smell it and see to alert his people and still make it out safely with them. He'd be the hardest thing to lose. You know, I know we, we get dogs throughout our life, but he's been the best. Oh, he is the best. That smile and being there for his humans. Oh, we are so lucky to have dogs. We do not deserve them, in my opinion. I mean, you guys know I'm a little nuts about it, but geez Louise, that's a swell story. So sweet. All right, that is all the time that we have for now, but I want to leave you with a few more of your outdoor adventure photos. These are so fun to see, and it's great inspiration if you're looking for a place to get out there. Thanks for taking a little time for the good stuff.